This is the 3D Viewmaster Space Adventure Lost in Space. Viewmaster Reel 1, Picture 1. Twas the middle of the night on the alien planet in that weird world half a galaxy distant from Earth. The robot patrolled back and forth in front of Jupiter 2, rocket ship of the daring astronauts lost in space. Suddenly, the robot's sensors began to probe. Warning, he shouted, as a red glow illuminated the area. Warning! A comet! The awakened astronauts cried as a brilliant pulsing comet zigzagged against the sky. Its speed and flight path indicate that this planet and the comet will collide. The knowing robot told them. I can feel its heat, Maureen said, mopping her brow. Quick, we'll have to back up and abandon this planet, John told them. Come on, let's go. Uh, I'm still in my nightshirt, complained Dr. Smith. Dr. Smith! chided the robot, in dire emergen emergency, and one may dispense with formal attire. Picture 2 Jupiter 2 lifted from its pad. John at the controls watched the comet's collision course. We can shake it, worried Don. We'll have to fly through it, John answered. Full thrust forward. Jupiter's equipment smoked and sparked as it flew through the comet. Water, air, panted Dr. Smith. I'm suffocating. My seams are melting, lamented the robot. After what seemed an eternity, Will pointed. Look, there's frost on the window. We've made it. Picture 3. Will, Judy and Penny moved to the viewport to enjoy the star-studded flight. In the distance, they saw a red flickering globe burst and shoot off flames like an erupting volcano. Fearfully, Penny asked, What's that? A supernova, answered Will. It could be dangerous. Meanwhile, Dr. Smith was speaking into his tape recorder. As I cast these words adrift into space, I pray whoever finds them will deliver me from this prison. The robot entered as Dr. Smith was writing SOS on the canister. Are you planning to cast adrift? Out of my way, you bubble-headed boob, ordered Smith. Why can't he like me? muttered the robot following Smith to the airlock on the lower deck. Ah, yes, said Smith, punching control buttons. Pressurize, depressurize, outside hatch, inside. Placing the canister in the airlock, he stared at it in dismay. It's floating, but not moving out. Picture 4. The canister will need a gentle push to send it into space. The robot told him. Oh dear, of course, Dr. Smith answered. Warning, warning, cried the robot, as Dr. Smith pushed the inner instead of the outer hatch button. Swish! The pressure escaped with a mighty roar, and the robot was sucked through the hatch. Picture 5 Hearing the alarm, the entire crew rushed below. Through the viewport they saw the robot, one claw missing, floating helplessly in space. What went wrong, Dr. Smith? asked Will. Judy and I heard the robot warn you, said Penny. Oh dear, the robot, my bone companion, wailed Smith holding the robot's missing claw. It was the result of an abnormal airlock. 
You mean an abnormal Dr. Smith? Don said in disgust. Will, get my tether line, John ordered, grabbing his space suit. I'll go after him. We'll need some fancy retro control, Don. Picture six. Be careful, Maureen said as John stepped into the airlock. John swam through space, but before he could rescue the, rescue the robot, his tether pulled tight. Howling himself back to the ship, he called into the mic. Get me the electromagnet. Roger, answered Don. As John floated back toward the robot, a hail of flaming debris shot through space. John, come back. The supernova is getting violent. Don called into the mic. We are getting a gravity pull and we'll need a retro thrust to get away. John switched on the electromagnet. The robot hovered for a beat, then drifted toward John. Safely aboard, Dr. Smith rushed to the robot, inserting his missing claw. You clumsy tin can, you should be ashamed of yourself. Shocked, the robot said. Dr. Smith, are you confused? Picture 7. At that moment, the supernova exploded in a mass of crimes and flames. The Jupiter twisted and spun through reddish space. With a sudden char, it eased its downward plunge and leveled off into a rocking motion. The shock-up crew rushed to the viewport to peer into the nothingness beyond. Look, over there, Judy cried as a gigantic balloon-shaped vehicle glimmered through the blackness. It appeared to be moving closer, closer. It's not coming to us. We're being pulled to it, Don shouted. The control equipment is wrecked. Hang on, we're going to crash. The Jupiter shuddered, then settled to a crunching landing. Viewmaster Reel 2 Picture 8 This is Jupiter, John called frantically. This is Jupiter, robot. The radio and mic are dead too. Where are we? We are perched atop an alien ship, the robot informed him. Jupiter's lower hatch will give you ingress into its upper hatch. I have no other data. No data, grumbled Smith. What a stupid bubblehead. Cautiously, Don and John crept down the alien ship's ladder. Hello, John called. There was no answer, no sign of life. Somewhere out of the blackness a spotlight beamed on a door, opening it to reveal a room filled with statues. Upon entering, John reached up to investigate one of the figures, knocking, knocking it from its pedestal. An alarm began to clamor. The figure steered and moaned. It's a prison ship with frozen convicts, John said. I knocked him off his electronically controlled pedestal and he started to thaw. Picture 9. At that instant, the alien robot guard rolled into the prison wing. Pow! He shot a freezing ray at a melting prisoner, then replaced him on the pedestal. Staring straight ahead, the robot guard moved out. Why, he didn't see us, Don exclaimed in surprise. I think he's just programmed to guard the prisoners, John answered. Come on, let's see where he goes. The robot guard entered the alien ship's control center and took his place in front of a vast checkerboard of flashing lights. Around the chamber were banks of automated equipment, all facing a church's bench of steely computers. Above the bench was a clock. Its sweep second hand stopped. 
the ships are mated from stern to stern. Don said, scanning the central control console. By freezing the prisoners, no hunger strike, no riots, no escapes. Eyeing the clock, John added, the time lapse chronometer is frozen. The poor devils will be here forever. Their search continued to the alien ship's throbbing engine room. Just what the doctor ordered for the ailing Jupiter. Don said with a smile as the two dismantled a propulsion unit. Picture 10. Meanwhile, back on Jupiter, Maureen stared out into space. Her hands clenched with worry. I wish I knew what was happening down there. Dr. Smith says people also serve who only stand and wait, Judy told her mother. Penny wrinkled her nose. Dr. Smith says. Picture 11. Standing guard, Jupiter's robot said. I sense a kindred spirit below, another robot. We'll have to warn dead and done, Will exclaimed. Come on, robot and Dr. Smith. Reluctantly, Smith followed the two down into the alien ship. Eek! he shrieked, seeing the frozen convicts. Are they alive? Do not fear, Dr. Smith, the robot assured him, explaining their plight. Some would be free by now if the clocks were still working. Picture 12. As Will and the robot continued their search, Smith lingered in front of a prisoner named Fancic. A string of pearls forming a cat's cradle was stretched across his bony fingers. Poor devil. In a manner of speaking, I too am a prisoner. Smith gave Fancic a sympathetic pat cheering him on his pedestal. Flash! Fancic dropped the cat's cradle around Smith's neck, tightening it. I'm innocent, he moaned. I'm a true prince of virtue. Help me! Help me! How? asked Smith. I'm a stranger here, you know. Picture 13. I must plead my case, said Fancic. But if I leave here, it will alert the guard. He snatched Smith, plopped him on the pedestal, and sprang free himself. If you move, the robot guard will cone them you to a frozen sleep. I, I won't move, promised Smith. But as soon as Fancic lumbered from sight, Smith shuddered. I can't stand it. The alarm reverberated through the ship as Smith leaped from the pedestal. Enraged, Fancic rushed back. For your treasury, for your treachery, I will kill you. No, dear friend, begged Smith. I want to go with you to the prison board. I'll be your character witness. Glancing about to see if the bell's head alerted the robot guard, Fancic grabbed a club from a frozen convict and raised it above his head. I'll smash my pedestal. That should break the circuit and stop the alarm. Stand back. Wham! Wham! The pedestal cracked, emitting smoke, and a clang of the alarm was silenced. Fancy slapped Smith on the back. Zachary, you said you too were a prisoner. What was your crime? Crime? Dear Fancy, I'm as innocent as you. Both as innocent as the day we were born, Fancic leered, giving Smith a knowing wink. Right, friend. Picture 14. Don and John, down in the engine room, heard the urgent clanker. We'd better get out of here fast, John said, grabbing the dismantled parts of the propulsion unit. The robot guard 
alerted by the checkerboard of flashing lights, rolled off in search of the escaped convict, opening a second door to the engine room he saw Don. Thinking he was fancy, he grabbed Don and janked him from the room. Don, open up, John shouted, pounding on the now sealed door. Viewmaster Reel 3, Picture 15. The robber guard dragged Don to the control chamber, where he bound his hands with electronic manacles. Bus blink, bus blink, he signaled the three computers on the church's bench. The computers began to flash. What is your number? I'm not one of your prisoners, Don answered. On this vessel, there are only prisoners, the computers flashed. You are fancy. You were sentenced to a frozen sleep. Now you try to escape. My name is West, Don shouted. Your automatic system is all fooled up. And if your computers weren't out of whack, you'd know I'm telling the truth. Contempt, 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 flashed the computers. Your sentence will be doubled, doubled, doubled. Robot, take him to the freezing chamber, chamber, chamber. Picture 16. John streaked from the engine room just as Will and the robot were approaching. Will, what are you? Dead, Will interrupted. There's another robot. I know, answered John. He's captured Don. The robot's senses began to flail. I can now read their robot's programming like the back of my senses. Come. The robot led the two to where the robot guard was standing watch in front of the freezing chamber. The robot guard raised his senses. Bus blink, bus blink, bus blink. The robot answered his signals, then the robot guard shuffled down the corridor. He thinks I'm a relief guard, the robot explained. Emitting an electronic sound signal, the refrigerator door creaked open. Picture 17. John rushed through the swirling mass of icy vapors to rescue the almost frozen Don. Smack, slap, smack. Frantically, they worked over his inner body. Brrrr, shivered the awakening Don. Brrrr. John, Will, what happened? How'd I get here? Picture 18. Briefly, John explained. And now let's get those spare parts back to the Jupiter. Meanwhile, back in the prison wing, Fancic and the would-be hero, Dr. Smith, were not idle. Two centuries ago, raged Fancic. That's when we should have been free. Dear friend, let there be justice, cried Smith as he chained the frozen convicts to the floor. Fancic, amid a shower of sparks and flames, destroyed the pedestal alarm signals. To the bridge, shouted Fancic as the freed prisoners charged down the corridor. Warning, warning! signaled the robot. John drew his gun in an attempt to hold the roaring pack at bay. Picture 19. Destroy, destroy, Fancic ordered as the rioting mob flailed away at the control chamber equipment. John vaulted to the church's bench. Stop, you'll destroy the entire ship. It's cheated us out of 200 years, yelled Fancic, and they're going to pay. Dr. Smith struck a mature pose. I'm not afraid to die in the cause of men who have been unjustly incarcerated. Picture 20. Listen to me, John pleaded. Give me one minute to fix the electronic clock. Frantically, John worked with the frozen clock's terminals. The mob's shouts of anger turned to cries of joy as the sweep hand began to move and a computer's voice announced, 
your term of imprisonment is now ended. Picture 21. As the astronauts departed, Fancyk dropped his pearl cat's cradle in Wilt's hand, a token of your adventure. Repaired once again, Jupiter lifted off the alien ship to continue its flight into space. Warning, the robot signaled to Maureen, Penny and Judy as Dr. Smith settled down to tell them the story of his bravery. And there I was trapped in that grisly horror chamber with no hope of rescue. But my ready wit, resourcefulness and courage allowed me to take control. Oh, hum, yawned his audience.